Hey guys, I'm Odinosity and welcome to the Honda Ruckus Build Series Part 9. Now this is my weekly series where I'm showing you guys the whole process changing a stock Ruckus into an awesome build. Now before we get started, today's episode is sponsored by the Moto Amino app. Now Moto Amino is a pretty cool app for you to find a bunch of other people who have the shared interest of riding motorcycles. Once you join, you can check out the front page that has posts from everyone in the community, or you can join one of the public chats that people have created for different topics, different riding groups, different areas. This is a really cool way to find other people to ride with, which was one of the difficult things for me when I first started riding a motorcycle. I've created a public chat of my own for this Ruckus Build series, so you can ask me questions if you guys have any, or just talk with other people who are interested in the build. Hit that search button in the app, search for Motonocity and give me a follow. So check out Moto Amino. I'll have links to both the iPhone and Android version at the top of the description if you wanna check it out just to make it easy on you guys. So without further ado, let's get started with today's build. Sorry. Thought I heard something. Uh, so yeah, today we're gonna be working on finishing up the front. We're gonna be working on finishing up the front end of the Ruckus. Last week we put on the handlebars, we put in the uh, new fork stem with the triple tri We put in the uh, new triple tree, and today we're gonna be completing that full front end. We're gonna be putting on the new wheel and tire, which I've got mounted. We're gonna be putting on the forks. We're actually gonna be bolting the front frame with the... Hey, what, what are you doing in my garage? Who are you? It's Fry, Fry Riding. I don't, I don't know who Fry Riding is. Yes, you do. I did all the work on the CRF with you. Fry Riding. <laughs> About my best friend, he's a warm hearted person who loves me till the end. People let me oh, fly. Yeah, I'm back. Where, where have you been? I don't know. <laughs> so, if you're new to the series or you're a new subscriber, you may not know Fry Riding. He did the whole first CRF 450R Supermoto build series with me, and he was in uh, some of the first episodes of that series, but he's uh, been. I also ate a tube sock once. But finally he's back, so he's gonna be working on the build with me again, and he's gonna be helping out with whatever we're doing today, which is the whole front end and bolting the front frame to the rear frame. So we got a lot of cool stuff going on. This should look more like a ruckus by the time we're done on it. It will have at least one wheel on it today, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, don't tell Monocity, but I took a screw from over there, from somewhere, I don't know what it's for, and I hit it. You'll never know where it came from. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be hilarious. Just, just wait, just wait, just wait. Shh, don't tell, don't tell. So here's where we're sitting at right now. We got the uh, frame and mounted up the new triple tree and uh, steering stem, the new handlebars, the uh, new stem neck from the ruck shop right here. That's all done. Uh, some of the things that we're gonna be working on, oh, yeah, why is it? <laughs> it's really front heavy, isn't it? We're gonna shorten up the handlebars. This is uh, something that I've heard a lot of people do with these bars, so we're gonna do that a little bit, probably take off maybe one to two inches of each side. Um, we're gonna put on the new forks, the NCY forks from uh, scooterworks.com. Those are gonna go on. We're gonna mount up the uh, spacer kit with the wheel that I got mounted this week. Here is that with the uh, low profile tire. Look at that freaking stance. Man, I'm gonna be like one of those, what's that Instagram page, Stance Nation? I think I'll definitely be able to show up on that page now. Oh, Stance Diesel Trucks? <laughs> stance Diesel Trucks, is that a thing? That's a thing. Oh hey, my gosh. Stance Diesel Truck, of course I know. Oh, I'm thinking of like an oh. actual like lower truck with like Oh. Insane camber. So we got that new wheel. Uh, we're gonna get that mounted up with the whole front kit that is in this box. We got the uh, new rotor, that's gonna be going on. We've got the uh, new caliper bracket, that's gonna go on. The new caliper itself, the new axle rod, uh, some random bits here and there, and brake lines. Is that it? You excited? You know what else we got going on? What do we got? Stacy's mom has got. So the first thing that we're gonna to do today is shorten up these handlebars. Now this is something that the ruck shop told me that a lot of people do, and that most people take off one to two inches. I think it's probably comfortable about right there, so I'll probably take off maybe one inch on each side. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna be using a hacksaw. What? Fred, why are you trying to use a hacksaw to cut wood? I don't know. So I'm gonna be using this, a hacksaw made to cut metal, 
got fine, fine teeth. That's why it works well on metal. And uh, I'm gonna tape off these so I have the exact line that I wanna be using, and uh, it should be pretty easy. Okay, apparently hacksaws aren't for metal either, at least this crap, it's probably this crappy hacksaw, that's probably why. Uh, I'm just gonna go at the uh, handlebars with my grinder and make a quick, uh, quick job out of this. Maybe I should do this outside. Again. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> I can feel like the stuff hitting me in the face. Ah! Now I need to uh, just sand it up a little bit. You can use the grinder? I'm gonna use the grinder. Grinder. Or something like that. Oh yeah, do it again. Do it again. Grinder! Yeah. This is a great shot. This is going in the in the video. I don't care what you say. Put it in the movie. Put it in the movie. Ooh, yeah. Peel it nice and slowly. Yeah. There. It's like it came like that. Done. All right, now we are going to mount, let's actually mount it to the rear frame first. Deal. Oh, okay, here is something that I forgot to do with powder coating. So y'all got um, really excited about how many times I said mask off in the last episode. I didn't actually mention it, but the, uh, not on this frame. Actually, well, I'll show you this to you. These uh, parts right here gets masked off. But the parts that you also have to mask off are on the rear frame. And that is where it mounts to right here on top of these holes. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these are masked off. These masked off. Masked. So since these didn't get masked off, I'm gonna just uh, grind it down a little bit with the Dremel and uh, we'll be good to go. Good. All right, so I just ground those down a little bit and that way now when the front frame sits on the rear frame, it's gonna be metal to metal. That way for uh, any of the uh, grounds that we set up there with uh, wiring, it'll be able to have contact on metal. So I got uh, this dresser kit from the ruck shop, not for an actual like clothes dresser, but dresser as in like dressing things up. Uh, so it'll look nice. It's got these uh, black pieces here. We're gonna use the bolts that it has in here for the frame mount and using the uh, cup washers that go with it. Next up, we're gonna be putting the forks on. These are the NCY forks that I mentioned I got from scooterworks.com. Uh, so the one with the adapter goes on the left side of the ruckus if you're sitting on it, and the one without that goes on the right side. So you'll notice that it has these little uh, divots at the top, and when you look at the inside of the uh, NCY triple tree, um, the top bolt on here actually sticks a little bit out on the inside. So that bolt actually goes through here and it kind of functions as um, like a little holder for the top of the fork.
So right now it's actually sitting in there, so that's why I can only really move it a little bit because this bolt actually sits through that divot. I don't want to tighten them all the way down yet just in case I'll need to uh, loosen these or move them around a little bit. So here is the front hub. We're gonna get this mounted up to the wheel along with the new rotor that was part of the front end kit. And it comes a little bit loose. Uh, you're gonna wanna take out these bolts, put them back in with uh, some red Loctite. All right, so here is the uh, front wheel and we're gonna be mounting the hub to this. One of the sides on this wheel has this recessed section um, and the other side is completely flat. This flat side is the valve stem side and that's gonna be on the right if you're on the ruckus. So that the hub okay. can actually go right through and sit in this recessed section right there. And then it's gonna be bolted in with these bolts that I already took out um, right into the hub. gonna get mounted right here with these uh, fancy purple ones. They're so fancy, the pads come pre-installed. That's a freaking nice caliper. That, that caliper is like, is it as big as the one on the CRF? No. It's still pretty beefy. It's pretty close. So we're gonna be putting that caliper on uh, and it's gonna be going on with this NCY rotor that came as part of the front end kit. Uh, by the way, uh, all the parts that we're working with today are gonna be down in the description if you wanna check them out yourself. Uh, but this is gonna be going on, but there's a little bit of a trick since the uh, caliper is <laughs> so large that if you put the uh, rotor onto the hub and you screw it down tightly, you're not gonna be able to get the caliper in. So what we're gonna do is actually slide the caliper onto the rotor first and then mount the rotor onto the wheel and we're gonna put a little bit of a uh, blue painters tape around that caliper and around the rotor so that we make sure that we don't scratch up the uh, wheel. We seem to have lost our uh, hex socket. Hi. People, hi. <laughs> People sitting next to me did not stop talking the whole time. So I wrote a little thing on a card and stuck it up, and the guy took it away. Abby went to the movies with her sister. They went to see Moana. Oh, I saw that. Called? It's a new, oh so a new oh Pixar God. movie. Right. Yeah. No, it's Disney. Ow. I missed out. Yeah, well, see, okay, I, I heard that it was not good. I originally heard that it's supposed to be way better than Frozen. Yes. We are trying to find a, a socket that we lost. Fry lost it. I found it. Brent lost Actually, it. that's probably on video of you going, did you fart? And me going, no, I stepped on a socket. Yes! <laughs> that's what it was. So you stepped on the socket, you moved But it you took it off. You totally took it off. And it was hiding <laughs> in plain sight. All right, we have the correct size socket. This better be the correct size socket. This is still not the correct size socket. This, you know what? This has to be a... It has to be. It has to be the six. Maybe it's standard size, not metric. Come on, Fry. Use some of that strength. I thought you were going to the gym now. Nope, too big. If I had a niggle. Uh, you know what? I think it's just that. It's just that one. Yeah. It's so strange how it's like. All the other, yeah, all the other, these other bolts are perfect. It's just this one. It's like. Hold it still. This, this looks so good, dude. That looks awesome. So um, we're actually gonna put tape around it now since it's loose on it here, um, so that when we're trying to mount it up to the forks, it doesn't shake around and mess up the actual wheel. So I'm gonna do that now. By the way, here's the spacer kit. Here is the axle and it's pretty sick. So we got a selection of spacers and washers and a caliper adapter that also had spacers. And we have little spacers that came with the Ruck Shop spacer kit. And uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to figure out how this all goes together. We know that the longer of these two large spacers goes on the caliper side on the left. After you put it on, you, you're gonna wanna check to make sure that you're, uh, you're spaced correctly on both sides. 
as you can see the um, on the left side of the screen that's a lot wider of a gap than on the right side so we're gonna put uh, these spacers whoops I'm gonna put these spacers on this side so uh, I didn't exactly record us doing what we just did um, we put the other two washers over here but it still looks like it's a little bit too close here and I don't have any more washers that I can use to space this out so that it evens out that gap. The other thing, um, so I mentioned that the, sh the longer of the uh, two spacers goes on the caliper side, so then the shorter one is over here. Then we have the caliper adapter, which is gonna go on like this and there's two black spacers that come with the uh, caliper adapter kit. So here's one, here's the other, and then these bolts right here are from the spacer kit from the ruck shop. And that's gonna get mounted right here, so it'll go through those holes that are right next to those bolts. Um, but the issue that we have is that the two little spacers that come with the, uh, the ruck shop kit are meant for the two piston caliper and this is the four piston caliper. Um, so you can't use those spacers. What, you're gonna, what we're gonna have to do is make our own spacers by uh, just getting some washers, which is intended, that's what we're supposed to do, um, but that's what you gotta do with the four piston caliper. Unfortunately, fry riding has to go, and uh, he's not gonna be here tomorrow, so I'll try to take care of it tomorrow. I gotta go to Lowe's, get some of those washers, and uh, hopefully I can finish up this front end and get that evened out. I may have to even get one of those bigger washers. Well, you know when you go to Lowe's, if you get a bigger washer, you also have to get a bigger dryer. Bigger dryer. And that's it, I'm out, see ya. Peace. Bye, Fry. <laughs> Bye, girls. I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, so here is where I'm at with the front end. I spent like the last hour actually working on it. I had to go to Home Depot. Uh, and pick up a bunch of different washers. Luckily, I got all the ones that I needed and just barely enough to. So here is how all of this stuff works. So the goal here is to get everything centered on these forks. Now, you gotta get the wheel centered, make sure that the gap over here on the right side is the same as the gap over here on the left side. That was the first issue that I noticed in that even with the two washers here and the longer spacer, it still wasn't shoved over enough that way to the right side to be completely centered. So um, depending on your setup, uh, depending on what you're using, um, and even depending on how the bushings were put into your wheel or your hub are gonna determine what kind of spacers and washers uh, you're gonna be needing to put where. So for me, I used the longer spacer from the spacer kit along with the two washers in that spacer kit and on top of that, a third washer that I had to pick up from the store um, in order to get the wheel centered in the middle of the forks completely. And then over here, we just have the uh, shorter of the large spacers. Then, once you get that completely centered, you have to worry, to worry about getting the uh, caliper centered on the rotor. So it's kind of hard to see here because of the lighting. You see the rotor right there and it goes through the caliper, so what you gotta do is try to get that caliper centered on the rotor. And in order to do that, I'm using five M10 washers on the caliper bolt. That's a bolt that goes through the adapter all the way to the caliper. Then I have two M8 washers uh, right there on the M8 bolt that goes to the adapter. Um, and then the other washer that I mentioned down here was the uh, extra M12 washer, if it'll focus, right there on top of that spacer. So there's three total washers here with the spacer. All right, so here's how it's spinning right now. It's not, it's not great. I think it might be rubbing on the caliper, 
which doesn't make sense to me because I feel like I spaced it correctly. And I think that's because the uh, pistons and the caliper don't have any pressure on them right now. So the uh, brake pads can kind of move back and forth. And so that's why the uh, caliper may kind of shift a little bit on the rotor. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's the problem. So I'm gonna talk to the ruck shop, see if they got any thoughts on it. Uh, so that's gonna be it guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I'm so excited that Fry Riding is back here and uh, I'm really excited with how this is looking. I am so stoked about this. Otherwise, that's gonna be it guys. If you wanna check out some of the other episodes in the series, hit that playlist link in the description. I'm Motonocity, videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. We'll have a new build series for you next Sunday. Otherwise, that's gonna be it. I'll see you in the next one. This is episode nine, 10? God. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> hey guys. Uh. <laughs> yes, you do. I did all the work on the CRF with you. I eat a lot of pickles, you know. <laughs> I make inappropriate noises. I want to say a whole tube of toothpaste. This bench makes me look pregnant. <laughs>